My name is Dr. Teresa Muma. I'm the Executive Director, African Council for Distance Education, where I'm coordinating the open and distance learning initiatives in Africa. And uh, we have around 28 African universities uh, who are our members, and also around 40 individuals. So um, that is exactly what I do at the ACDE. The conference is focusing on um, how resilient we are after going through COVID. And uh, you realize COVID helped us learn have different lessons. Uh, for instance, we learned that we can now um, have learning happening virtually, and that is one thing that we learned. But how resilient are institutions to ensure that that continues? So that is the main theme here that we are exploring rolling in relation to resiliency and how we are navigating after COVID. Uh, in the first place, the African Council for Distance Education, if I may give you a little background, was established in 2004. Uh, this is a time when vice chancellors, rectors of universities, director generals and executive secretaries realized that open and distance learning was not valued like the not regular learning and because of that they said we need to come up with an organization that will ensure there is quality in uh, offering education through open and distance learning that is the origin of acd and how it was established in this conference we have vice chancellors from over 20 universities in Africa who are gathered here to share their experiences, their researches, plus other researchers who, who have also trained from the different um, um, universities and research institutions to be able to share their research findings on the various thematic areas uh, of this particular conference. We have held, as you have rightfully said, in the past six successive conferences. Um, the first five were physical, which were held in different countries. The sixth conference, which was held in 2021, was held virtually because that is when we were uh, on, on the height of COVID-19. So what I can say, this is the very first time we are holding a physical conference after COVID-19, uh, which is also a great learning experience for me because my first um, conference to organize with the African Council for Distance Education was in 2021, which was hosted by Lawe Open University in Ghana. And we purely held all our presentations, all our conversations virtually. So for me, I find this a new experience because for the first time, all the people we have been meeting virtually are congregated here at Masinde Mulilo University, uh, sharing their experiences, their research findings, the challenges that are facing the, um, the, the, the open and distance learning or e-learning or virtual, um, and how different universities are, are, are handling it. For example, uh, you know, in regular in, in regular education, students at the end of the semester, they will sit for their exams. It will be administered and then it is marked. But since COVID, universities had to migrate to assessing learners virtually, but it was a big challenge. One thing I have learned from the, the researches that have been presented is some universities resorted to having oral assessment, uh, where a student is orally assessed. Um, um, for their final exams. Um, others are revealing that they, they devised modes of assessing students virtually um, without coming to sit in a room. So it is a really a new experience and a new way of trying to embrace assessing learners so that they are able to learn from where they are, they are able to be assessed and we move away maybe from the traditional way of letting them sit down and um, sit for exams and, and, and then we are going to struggle marking. You know, when you assess virtually, it becomes easier. Sometimes the system marks and then even this, the feedback to the students comes almost automatically. You know what you have, been, you, you have been able to do at the end of doing that particular exam. AI, you can look at it in two ways. Um, one, um, 
you seeing artificial intelligence, students will get a shortcut towards getting information. And in my view, it contradicts the whole idea of uh, similarity index and uh, turnitin and all that, because if it has to get information that you require for the topic that you are interested in, where did it get that information? Definitely, if you subject that to similarity index, definitely it might show a hundred um, hundred percent similarity. Um, again, you cannot ignore it because it will continue being used. So I think higher institutions of learning and all the other stakeholders need to find out, how to come up with a way of trying to navigate through this in a way that they balance. Because as educators, we may not have control of if we have given a student assignment, control of where he's going to get the content from, how, um, and, and, and then we control. So it's a matter of finding a way of balance, striking the balance and uh, helping students to, 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 to devise methods of ensuring that it, their creativity is also seen. Because, for example, if you are given a, an assignment, it will involve your thinking, but if you subject that same topic to the, um, for example, chat GTP, um, it will give you information. You will have not uh, thought, and then you give it for marking. So by the end of the day, you are passing through the system within content that you don't understand yourself, but you might be excelling because it gave you the right information that you were lo looking at. So technology is moving very fast and it requires a lot of attention and um, ways of supporting students so that they don't lose their creativity um, and also the social interaction that goes along with um, the traditional methods of learning because emotional control and all that. So. That is what I can say uh, in terms of. So just to give a background, the African Council for Distance Education is managed by the uh, board. And the board is usually elected after every three years through the General Assembly. So the immediate former board was elected in 2021. And for the last three years, they have achieved so much, quite a number of things that they have um, enabled SED to achieve. Number one, the quality assurance toolkit that we use uh, or our member institutions use to assess or to ensure that they are offering quality services or quality education through open and distance learning. It is during the immediate past uh, former board uh, that the toolkit was reviewed. And we were also able to train 27 trainers of trainers on quality assurance from 15 African universities. For me, that is a great achievement. Number two, um, we also realized that the, our constitution, was, which was developed in 2004, uh, uh, also many things have happened. It needed to be um, amended and it is the current board that was able to amend that constitution. Apart from that, the board worked so hard such that through our president, Professor Goski Alabi, um, we were able, to, she was able to create networks with other like-minded institutions. So the visibility of the African Council for Distance Education was, was, um, um, was visible and so all those are achievements that goes towards the immediate former board. Um, on, on, uh, on Monday, through our general assembly, which was held here at Masinde Moliro University, we were able to have power changing hands uh, from Lawe Open University, where our former immediate former president hailed from, Professor Goski Alabi. Uh, power was handed over to Masinde Moliro University, which means the current vice chancellor of Masinde Muliro University now becomes officially the president for African Council for Distance Education. Kenyatta University holds the position of the secretary general, meaning our 
Vice Chancellor, Professor Paul K. Wainaina, is continues to be our Secretary General. We have the first Vice President coming from the National Open University uh, of Nigeria. So, Professor Olufemi Peters is the Vice Chancellor who is now um, holding that particular position. The second Vice President went to Open University of Tanzania, where Professor Elfas Bisanda becomes the second vice president. KCA University is now representing the East African region. The South African region is being represented by Zimbabwe Open University by Professor um, Henry Gundani, who is the vice chancellor, Zimbabwe Open University. Um, to the Western region, we got national teacher training Kaduna um, led by Professor Musa Garba Maitafsil who is now the representative of uh, the West African region. The treasurer position was taken by University of South Africa who have been in that docket for quite some time now. So as you can see our board runs the different regions of Africa and um, Immediately they come to office, they co-opt other uh, members uh, from other regions to represent the different linguistic, Lusophone, uh, Francophone, uh, and all those other um, regions, so, so that we ensure that we have representation for all the regions in Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's next for SED? Um, the next next for ACD now is the new board to drive ACD to the next level and I'm excited because I have very strong people who are going to take ACD to the next level and I believe um, we will uh, do more um, this time round than even we did before. Yeah. Asante Sana, your last word? My last word is to invite all higher institutions of learning to join the African Council for Distance Education because the African Council for Distance Education is a membership organization and we have three categories of membership. One is being an institutional member where you register your higher institution whether a university or a college as an institution member. We have associate member where if you are uh, even if you are not a university but you are Activities are around open and distance learning. You are free to join us and you can join as an individual member. So as, an, as somebody in the academia, uh, you are free to join the African Council for Distance Education and together we will move our region to the next level. Thank you.